Welcome to Healthy Minded. This is our first official episode after the introduction we did. Um, so this one is about our genetics, our DNA. Um, this has been a big one for me because mm. to be healthy minded is to really believe that your body is equipped to guide you to um, have the function, have the capability and that if you choose um, a good lifestyle and you have a good attitude, your genetics really won't be against you. They're, they're meant to support your adaptation. Now, Joe, mm. what's your side of that whole world of where we've come from with genetic determinism and where we are today with what we understand? And George, this is a really, very rapidly evolving field and literally, you know, where the knowledge is at today compared to 10 years ago and obviously 50 years ago um, is, you know, is, is very, very different. So you know, anything we're talking about today look, potentially could be you know, different by tomorrow. The argument goes to about this notion of nature versus nurture. Now there are certain things that are fixed. People are have got a certain eye colour, uh, you've got you know, a certain way that you put together, and that is your genetics, and that's what you, you start with. So there are some things that are fixed, yeah. and there are some genetic conditions, um, haemophilia, probably the best example of that, where yes, there are set genes that control it, and you know, you really there is no way around that. There's stubborn <clears throat> genes. Absolutely. Though. However, we also know that only 20% of human DNA has been found to code for proteins and, and parts of the body. So there's another 80% that was initially, and this again shows you how quickly things changed, mm. initially called junk DNA mm. when the uh, genetic code was done in the 90s. Mm. In the last few years, what they've found is that it's not junk at all, but it's seen, which is not a surprise, I don't think. <laughs> no, you know, it'd be a lot of redundancy. Junk. Yeah, just let's have a bit of extra DNA, it doesn't <laughs> do anything, but yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, what it does is it seems to organise and orchestrate the other 20%. So mm. it, it does have a regular, some sort of regulatory type role. Now we don't know exactly how that is. But what we do know also is that the telomeres, which are the tail end of the DNA, it's always been held that a cell can replicate so many times and then that's it and there's nothing you can and do And that's about. because the telomeres are getting Keep damaged over time with yes. constant use, yeah. right? They wear out. Yeah. yeah. And over again, over the last decade, work that's been done looking at stress management, looking at diet and exercise has shown that no, it's not set in concrete, that telomeres can actually lengthen. And it makes sense that there's this interplay between what you started with, which is your genetic building blocks, and how you look after it. It's a little bit like a car or a house. If you move into a house that's newly built, if you maintain it and you look after it, it may well do better than if you trash the place. Yeah. You know, it sounds so obvious. I'll but, stop you know, trashing we don't, uh, you know, We sometimes don't think about it in terms of the the human body. Yeah. This is not a fountain of youth. It's not to say you're going to live to be a thousand. No, it's not about that. Okay. But it's, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it is to say that we're not necessarily prisoners of, of our genetics. Again, yes, eye colour, a few other things like that. Yeah, yes, yeah. sorry. Not that you're imprisoned that. by that, really. Well, you, you know, some things you're stuck with. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to change. But in terms of how you age, not that you age, yes, we're all going to get older, we're all going to die one day, but it's more about how we age mm -hmm. is really the, the issue. And people want to remain in reasonably good health for as long as they're around. Um, what scares people more about getting older is not necessarily that they're going to die one day, because I think that, that is a given. But it's the nature of how that happens and how much enjoyment they get of life beforehand. So it's the, the idea of losing your physical faculties, but yes. also your mental faculties. Yes. So the better we can age and the better we can look after our DNA, and it does has been shown that exercise does influence that, managing your stress influences that, and having a, a healthy diet doesn't mean you can't have a treat from time to time, but you know, eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, eating good quality fats and proteins has an influence. There's no one single factor. If somebody says to you, take this supplement and that will be it for your DNA, how come I'm we're sorry, always it's... How come we're always after the silver really bullet? Because we like It's a... always the one silver bullet. Because like... it's... <laughs> a, we like the fact that it's simple. Um, B, we like the fact that it requires not a lot of effort from so, us. So um, why, why are we lazy? And I don't believe we really are lazy. Mm -hmm. I believe um, our lack of motivation comes from wrong assumptions. Look, I think we've been conditioned um, through clever marketing for you know, hundreds of years. I mean, look, this is essentially snake oil revisited. 
There's nothing new about selling people miracle cures. It's probably yeah. been going back to Roman days and, and maybe before. So mm. I think there's something in human nature that likes the idea of um, a simple solution. Mm. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that idea. Mm. But <laughs> there isn't all. There isn't always a one pill solution. So no, the answer is not going to come in a pill. Looking after yourself is not difficult. So it's not about it either is as simple as taking a pill or it's going to be beyond me. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the solution is actually fairly simple or the way forward is fairly simple. It might not just be what you first thought. Joe, if I was to um, redefine the silver bullet, mm. right, it would be not so narrow. It would be probably about how we view our environment, our yeah. attitude, our belief system, yeah. because that controls what we see. If our perception is that we live in a very hostile environment that never has enough for us, mm. we're suddenly fighting when we don't have to. Sure. We're shutting down, we're getting tense. This controls mm. the brain's ability to detect so. abundant opportunities to be more um, successful, you know? Well, like, certainly, if we bring this back to our concept of, of healthy-minded, yeah. a lot of this does start with how we think about the world. And how we think about the world obviously influences how we interact with the world and how we conduct ourselves. So it does come back to the beginning of our beliefs and our ideas and our, uh, our thoughts. Yeah, because we talk about being a product of your environment. And I know that that's a given because if you're in an environment that's constantly bombarding you mm -hmm. with specific environmental signals, right? Yeah. Eventually the body's going to adapt to it, right? But a lot of that is created through our interpretation of the environment, which is why That's... we could be on a roller coaster ride mm. at the same time, one's in hell, one's in heaven. Dif you know, same environment, but we're determining what it means to us. Uh, that's exactly as you say, George. I don't think we're captives of our environment because we have a couple of choices. We can yeah. choose, our, we can move or alter our environment. So physically we can and do we it. Can, and we can alter how we respond to it. So if we're getting, yes. for example, negative messages through the news, we can say, well, I'm not going to watch the news, mm. for example. Or, or at least learn how to look beyond what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we can find ways to adapt and find ways, again, that work for us. And so then, mm. if we're seeing things in a certain way, then obviously our genetics are going to perform a function to sure. try to adapt to that. Sure. So really what we're saying here in, in, in this Healthy Minded segment is that your genes will serve to help you adapt to the environment you think you're in. Is that right? The genetics influence what you do in the environment, yeah. influences you. What you do in the environment also influences your genetics. Yes. And essentially, the, the term that I think people will be hearing more of is going to be called epigenetic, yes. which is not just about whether genes are there or not, it's whether they're switched on or off, and the degree of, um, I suppose, what they call regulation, which can be up or down. So it's a bit like having a, a tap in the shower. You can turn it on or you can turn it off. Yes. But if it's a hot tap, you can also have it turned on to very hot or not so hot. It's not a perfect analogy, yeah. but that's a, perhaps a way for people to think about uh, you know, genetics. Good, so you're, in, so you're not controlled by your genes. However, when, when they are set, they are controlling. Yeah. Is that an easy way of explaining it? Some things are set, yeah. but not to the extent that we think. Yeah, cool. All right, thank you. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like Healthy Minded, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, and uh, you know, share with your friends. Please put comments below whether you agree, disagree, if you've got topics you'd like for the future. And until next time, stay healthy minded.